Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Welcome to this tutorial where I will be showing you how you can turn a very basic image of a product like this ketchup bottle and turn it into something like this and this using a completely free AI tool. So I have created tutorials like this before but they have involved the usage of generative fill inside Photoshop and the problem with that is Photoshop is a paid tool but this AI tool that I'll be showing you right now is completely free the only thing is that it's going to give you a downscaled output but that's not a problem we can upscale it using a free software also so let's get started with the process this will be the main image I have shared the image with you so that you will be able to uh, work along with me the link is in the description also these two images have been shared with you okay so you'll get it all together because we will be using these as a reference to get the prompt because everything will be based on the prompt that we give to this AI tool so what is this free AI tool so this is called as replace anything and the URL for this which is also given in the description of the video is replace hyphen anything dot today we'll also be using a bit of chat GPT and we will finally be upscaling our image also so these two tabs are open but we'll see that later once you are on this website and you have your images ready it's a very simple AI tool to use just go and scroll down below here you'll start to see some of the examples that they have given here I'm planning to create in the future a lot of videos using this tool with portraits and other things but right now let's just see the example with this ketchup bottle you uh, we will go to this tab here which says image create because that's where the interface is and you can see it's a very basic looking interface but of course it's a free tool also so we have you know we can understand that and here in the input image let's just upload that image of just that ketchup bottle so let's do that All right so here it is so I'm gonna hit that it's just gonna take a bit of time to upload this and once it does you're basically gonna get a couple of options here like you'll be writing your prompt here uh, it says click to this and all don't worry about that I'll just tell you everything and there's also a little option here so I'll talk about it all now here's the main thing you really don't have to worry about too many things right now the moment you upload your image you get this cursor like a plus sign It's basically asking you right now that okay you uploaded the image now what is inside that image that you want to retain okay so we want to retain this ketchup bottle and we want to just change the background right we don't want to change the ketchup bottle so what you do then is anything that you want to retain so in this case if you think of it is the foreground that we want to retain right so let this be selected on the foreground if you are planning to change the object and retain the background then in that case you will select this but in most of the cases you will be leaving this to foreground and then just with this cursor just click anywhere on that object okay it's going to take a bit of time and what you're going to get is this overlay so right now it's this overlay is telling me that yes this part of the bottle has been selected the AI tool has selected even the bottom part here but these parts are still missing so then we can click somewhere here and you might have to depending on the object you might have to do this a couple of times here so you can see now we've got these parts but this part is still left right so the closer the pixels are is going to then take it together like this so now can you see we've got the entire bottle so within two or three clicks you'll be able to see the markings also you will be able to isolate or retain that product right there's another more accurate way by which you can do it I'll tell you about it towards the end of the video okay but right now this part is done now is the part where we have to give it the prompt which is so that it can fill in the background okay so this is where those two reference images come in so if I go back here remember we're going to try with both these examples because these shots look good I just found them on Google so you can go to Google just type in ketchup or whatever product you're using product photography you'll be able to get so many images if whichever ones you like just download them and they become your reference images in this case these two were the reference images now how do we use them this is where chat GPT comes in because that's where we'll get a prompt that we're going to enter here so if you go to chat GPT I've already pasted this just write something like this I'm creating a background for a product shot using an AI tool I need a prompt for this the product is a ketchup bottle I'm also attaching a reference image so you can get an idea of the type of background I want to generate because in chat GPT along with this prompt I can also attach a file so let's start off with the first reference image and let's attach that file here along with this prompt before we hit go All right so this is our first reference image let me just attach that inside chat GPT and this is done and now we are going to hit go and it's going to analyze the image 
It's also going to go through what we are saying here and then it's just... So sometimes this might happen, okay? This is ChatGPT's mistake. It thinks that you are trying to generate the image, okay? So it, it kind of generates the image for you using the, the dolly thing and all, okay? But we don't have to worry about that. If it does that, because this happens sometimes, okay? You can just type in, you know, I did not ask for an image. I asked for a prompt, okay? So it'll just correct itself. To be frank, it doesn't happen that often, but it just happened this time. So I just let you know that yeah, sometimes AI can make these mistakes. So you can see, apologies for the confusion, and now it's giving me the prompt. So now we're gonna just copy this prompt, and now we will go back to our AI tool here, paste this here, and another thing that you can do is, before we hit run, though you can hit run right now also, it'll give you the generations here, but what you can do here is, in order to just make it more accurate, just open this up where it says more input uh, parameters, and just open this up, and here, under background image, you can actually upload that image here also. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna select this image that I use for the prompt in chat GPT also. And now, all we have left with is to just hit this run button, it's gonna take just a bit of time, and it's gonna give you four variations. So let's see this. All right, so that took around 20 seconds, 25 seconds, not bad for a free tool, and definitely even the generation is not bad for a free tool. So you can see just by, if you compare it with the image that we had uploaded, yeah, pretty close to that, the wooden things, the, uh, the, the tomatoes and all these things. So it looks pretty close to that. Let's see the different variations. Yeah, I think this also looks fine. This looks fine. Yeah, this has kind of gone for a flatly look, so that probably is not matching, but I think the first generation here was pretty good. So we can just hit download. Now the resolution here is gonna be less, but before we see that, let's also do it just repeat this whole process for the second image by again going into chat GPT and getting the prompt for that second reference image. So let me just directly jump onto the part where I get the prompt. All right, so I was just using chat GPT again and this is something that you might encounter that it might still allow you to use chat GPT but not with the attach file feature because I'm on the free plan of ChatGPT like most of the people, so it's saying upgrade to ChatGPT+. Plus. Now, we don't want to do that, but what we can do is there's no shortage of good AI tools like ChatGPT. So now what I've done is I've shifted over to Gemini AI because we can do exactly the same thing here. So I'm creating a background, just pasted this, the same thing that I did on ChatGPT. Let's upload the reference image, the second one here. All right, so I've just uploaded the image here, and the moment it does that, we can submit, and it's going to do the same thing. Just a different tool. So we've got our prompt. And now we can go back here. Only thing we need to change is first of all the prompt here and also our reference image. So let's just do that. Yeah, so this was one of the things I was struggling with when I was trying this tool that there was no way to delete this reference image, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just have to click back and start this process all over again. So let me just get to the step where I've retained this uh, object here. All right, so we're back to that stage. Just took me a few seconds to get it back. In case any of you figure out how to d delete that thing in the reference image, just leave it in the comments. So again, we're gonna just go paste this and then go here, attach our reference image. This time is the second one. And now let's hit run and let's see the results here. All right, so we've got the results and you can see this looks very close to that reference image. Let's see the four variations. I think this one looks really nice. I think this one looks the best till now, or probably this one. Let's just see. Yeah, I think the, I think, yeah, this looks overall more real. So let's download this. Let's quickly go to upscale.media. And this is a free AI tool to upscale the images. So let's quickly do that, at least for one of the images. All right, so I've just uploaded that image. And the resolution that replace anything gives out is very, very low. So Using this free tool, we'll probably be able to even upscale it to 4x because the only requirement to go to 4x on this tool is that it, the original image that you upload here should be below this resolution, 1500 by 1500. And I think that's already the case here. So you can just go into 4x. And hopefully we should be able to get a good result. So let's wait for this. All right, so we've got our 4x image here. Let's quickly download this and let's open it up and let's see how this looks. All right, so this is our final image. You can see it doesn't look bad at all, especially for a free tool here. Just some imperfections here, which again, you can literally use 
any tool out there, any AI tool, if you, even if you go to Google and type remove distractions AI, you'll be able to just find free tools where you can upload this image and remove things like that very, very easily. Or in case you have things like Photoshop, you can do that too. Now, I do plan to create more tutorials on this because this is this tool is not just about this, that you upload, you select, and then you change. There are certain features which I just want to talk about before I end this video. So for instance, one of the things is that you can hit this edit button and change some things in the image here, which we're gonna see in another tutorial when I make it. And also another thing here is that if we just go down here, we can actually upload a mask here. What that means is that if we are struggling with making a selection, we can, so if you're used to Photoshop, you must have heard of layer masks where the, the selected part is white and everything else is black. So something like that, an image like that of the selection we can upload here in case this tool is not doing a good job with the selection because Photoshop is obviously much better at making complex selections. So if you have something in which you really need to select something precisely and this tool is struggling, you can make the selection in Photoshop, create a black and white mask and upload this mask. So it's gonna treat that as your selection and then you can use this tool the same way. I'll probably make a tutorial on that. If you have any ideas, you can leave it in the comments and I'll definitely think about it in the next tutorial. So I hope that you like this tool and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because like you must have been seeing, I'm experimenting a lot with different AI tools these days and all my experiments are gonna be put up on this channel. I'll see you next time.